Hi, my name is Ken Mattis. I am the president of Atomic Climbing Holds. For the purposes of this video, I am not a structural engineer, nor am I a licensed contractor. However, I have an extensive knowledge of installing climbing hold anchors, and that's essentially what we're doing here. We're installing a life-saving device for the True Blue Auto Boy. So the first question most people ask is, how do you hang an auto belay? Well, the easiest way to do it is to get the true mount because it has all of the holes pre-drilled. It's exactly designed for it and it installs excellent onto a climbing wall. Now the trick with installing the true mount to a climbing wall is what kind of access you have to behind the wall. If your wall looks like this, you've already created some problems because the only way that we're going to recommend installing this true mount is by through bolting it, meaning the bolt passes through this bracket, through the climbing wall and through the structure. Now this is what the back of a well should look like. And if you notice, it's just a piece of plywood here, which is not structural. Structural means the framing of the work so that the frame can't come through the climbing wall. So in the cases of installing the true mount, what we would do is, is that we're going to install blocking in behind this wall. And this will allow us to through bolt the device all the way through. And then that way then it's attached to the entire wall. Okay, as you can see here is that we've solid blocked the entire wall through. So that way then when we're attaching our true mount, it's gonna go through solid material. So when we tighten it down, it's not bowing the wall and we're getting, this is attached to structural. As you can see on this side of the board, we've attached all this blocking through the sides. And then what we're going to do in addition is we're going to put this plate on the back of this here. And what this is going to do is, is this is gonna put the load onto the frame. Okay, what we've got is, is that we've marked where our two center points are on our bracket. That's where we're gonna drill through, which will go straight through all of the blocking. Now, one thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're installing this, you do not wanna be at the very top of the wall at the ceiling, because then you won't be able to be using the, the, the mounting points. So you wanna be at least four to six inches down from the top. Now we're gonna drill out the holes. Today we're using 3 8 but you can also use half inch. And we'll talk a little bit about which diameter to use on different materials at a later time in this video. We're going to pretend that this is an indoor installation using alloy steel bolts. So the mixture of the washer on an alloy steel is not that big of a deal. But when you are on the outside, you should be using a stainless steel bolt with a stainless steel washer with stainless steel fasteners. But we're pretending that this is an indoor application, so we're going to use steel. So the 3 8 can go through here. You could also use half inch. And if you notice on the front side, I've put the bolts in the center of the true mount. Now for the back attachment here, sometimes you don't always get the right length bolt. Sometimes you might have a smooth part of the bolt sticking out. The way to accomplish getting rid of that is just by stacking multiple washers on it. These are fender washers, and this displaces the load over a larger area. Here I'm using a serrated nut because I like the way that they lock down. And the tightening specs should be specifically to the bolt that you're using. And there we have our bracket installed through bolting, meaning this bolt is traveling through the entire amount of material. This is by far the safest way to install this mount. With the hardware, the most common thing that's asked is, can they use a lag bolt? What a lag bolt would do is it would go into solid material. This is not something that we recommend ever. This is a no-go for us. We only recommend through bolting. The reason is, is that we don't know where this bolt is going. We also don't know if you've broken this bolt inside the wall. And this is a life-saving device. 
So unless you're 100% certain of your hardware saving a life, you shouldn't be using any of these. I will never recommend this bolt or this bolt. This is a Tapcon bolt. Sure, we can get to the right diameter, but the pullout strength isn't something that you should ever be using for a life-saving device. Now, if you're going into, say, solid concrete, or you're going into rock. Now, depending on the, the hardness of the rock would determine the diameter. The softer the rock, I always go with half inch, and it would be stainless steel, stainless steel, everything in an outdoor application. If it's on, say, a concrete wall, indoors you could use zinc, outdoors, stainless steel. And the way that you would go into solid concrete is, is you'd use a minimum um, length of a four and a half inch bolt because this is just over a quarter inch, the thickness of this plate, to go embedment. And I would be recommending a half inch wedge bolt. And there's many different kinds that you can get. Powers fasteners is a very common one. There's also redhead. But you need to look at the specs to make sure that the tensile load is going to be able to handle this kind of application. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is attaching the auto blade to the bracket. Now, there's multiple different kinds. There are twist locks, like this one, where it twists and then opens. So really, it can never really get opened unintentionally. Then there's a barrel lock, and this has a barrel that screws down. Now, the negative of these is that you can weld this down there really, really tight when it goes under constant load. But either way, we hang these carabiners upside down so that even if you do have a barrel lock, as there's load on this, that barrel will only get tighter. If it was in this orientation, the barrel could loosen and technically open. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to use the barrel lock as our primary. And if you look on the top here, there's four holes. This is the primary mounting point. This is the secondary mounting point. And then these are personal mounting points for maintaining the device, whether when you're taking it down and taking it up, you can clip into these. I always face my gate out so that you can visually see it. And I always use a twist lock for auto blaze. They're just, they're bomber and they've lasted forever. So you take it and you have your handle on your device and this middle hole here with the black sleeve is your primary mounting point. So this here is the primary mounting point there. Now the next step is to install the secondary mounting point. Okay, for the secondary mounting point, most people would think, oh, we'll just slap another carabiner there. This is not what you should do because it shares the load off of the primary and you're not supposed to. So this is the primary, you can see it's under full load. If we loop this one in here, if we look at it, it looks, oh, that's great. Well, no, because it's actually tilted the nozzle away from pointing straight down as one. And two, you can see this is under load and this is under load. So this is not the way to do it. So instead of using the secondary as being too tight, you can see now that the nozzle is pointing straight down, what we do is we need to have a little slack in the system. You could do a quick link to a carabiner and have it laying there. You could use chain link, but for today we're gonna to use a climbing rated quick link. This is a 3 8 quick link, and I want the barrel to go down. No matter what, if it loosens and tightens, the barrel will go down, only making it tighter, not looser. And then we'll thread our sling through. When you look at the Headrush True Month install guide, you'll see that it has chains hanging off of these two bolts. This is by far my favorite device on the market. It's uh, made by Fixie. Um, where this would be installed when you're doing the true mount is, is that you would install it um, before this true mount is in. Like so. Okay, so this would be considered your top rope. So this allows you to belay manually off of the true mount this way while the true mount is in place. However, there is one thing that shows on the, on the install manual from Headrush and we'll do it in here. If you are in a top rope situation, you should retract this webbing all the way up into the device. The reason is, is, is that you can cut this webbing 
very quickly by riding a rope against it. So this is very bad. So when you're using the top rope, it comes behind the true blue, but then the true blue should not be hanging down the wall. It should be allowed to go all the way up to the device. All right, here we have our completely installed auto blade, true mount. It's been through bolted through the wall. We're attached with a twist lock on the primary. The secondary is loose. Um, and thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave comments in the, in the comment section below, or feel free to contact me personally at, at the office. Our telephone number um, you can find in our bio. And uh, see you next time.